Hey everybody, welcome back. James here again with you. And today I want to talk about uh, basically part two of tuning your Umarex gauntlet. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter what caliber it is, but um, <clears throat> mine is the 22 caliber. And I highly recommend seeing the first part of this, um, just to follow up. But I wanted to touch base on uh, a um, basically an upgrade to your gauntlet. Uh, so about three months ago, uh, Hajimoto um, made some baffles for it and I got a hold of some and I've been testing them ever since and uh, after doing all the factory tests that I wanted to do and show you guys what you can get with the factory gun I just wanted to show you what you can get with an upgraded uh, baffle system at the end of your um, shroud now uh, <laughs> hope he doesn't mind me using the photo of those baffles Through my testing, I have found that his baffling system seems to be a lot more, um, you know, velocity spread wise, downrange better. And I have velocity results to show that, or chronograph results. I'm not, I don't really care about the velocity. Uh, this is still the factory tune for the velocity. But what I care about is the spread. The spread is what matters downrange. You can have a gun that shoots fast as, it, fast as ever. But it ain't going to matter if your shot per shot isn't closest to the next shot, uh, well regulated. And with his baffling system, this gun is perfect. Um, now, with that vertical spread downrange, is basically is if your gun is perfectly tuned, your barrel and all that stuff. So, like I said, I highly recommend seeing the first part of this video if you haven't already. But I added my touch to his baffling system at the end of the shroud. And uh, right now I'm using the Crossman Premier 14 3 grain dome and pretty much this is my go-to pellet. Now I've already told you guys that this barrel on this gun was choked. Um, I know some things again about this gun that probably nobody does besides Umarex. Um, but again, you can find that out too. Um, So anyways, uh, just the, the spread is what really matters. This is basically a velocity tune. The spread uh, was cut at less than half using his baffle system versus the standard chamber uh, on the end. And like I said, I added my touch to it. So if you haven't seen part one, go check it out. But I just wanted to show you guys uh, my setup here. Now this is, this is how I get my, do my accuracy test. The gun is pretty much stable as possible. I take the, the bottle shroud off, I set the bottle in a bag, I do all this, I use my shooting bag. So this gun is as stable as it can be with me behind it. Um, now you could use a, a rest if you really wanted to, but this is how I shoot. I shoot with bags. So I want to start off by showing you guys the result I got at 45 yards. Now, um, this has to be the tightest five shot group I've ever gotten. I'll show you guys pictures of that. Uh, I got one cider shot. I always shoot a cider shot. That's my own preference just to see where it's landing and then I'll start shooting. I get relaxed and then start shooting for groups. Um, but 0.14 of an inch center to center, five shots with supposedly these cheap pellets and I have to say chronograph results don't lie. This pellet uh, is well up there in my book on the uh, you know quality and uniform shape and everything and for like eight dollars a ten of 500 uh, I'm not complaining I'm not gonna waste my money anymore on high-end pellets when I can get uh, best with this pellet with that said um, I also shot at 75 yards just to see what's going on and you have to understand an air rifle is not a firearm if you're into firearms if you shoot you know 50 yards 100 yards 200 yards it is not the same. What matters is how stable the pellet is downrange. Now, um, with the rest that I use, like this style bag, um, 
the gun is so accurate as mentioned in part one that anything I shoot becomes shooter error. That's how accurate this gun is and it's no joke. Um, so anyways, and that was with the magazine by the way. Uh, pellet, some pellets you can't use a magazine in it to get that great results because it dents the skirt or something like that before it even gets in the barrel. But just to show you guys what this gun is capable of, and I still haven't um, done 100 yards yet, which I'm getting ready to because the weather's changed. Uh, nothing, everything's getting in order. Everything's getting perfect for me to shoot. Um, but again, another five-shot group in that one cider that I took, 75 yards. And I took pictures of both these groups, which you guys will see. But this gun, the way it sits right now, is better than perfect if there is that possibility. And the regulator's working great, didn't do any power bobs, didn't do anything. This is a factory gauntlet besides the baffling system. And then my touch on it on the end, um, which stabilizes the barrel the best I've ever found a gun to shoot. So anyways, um, other than that, uh, you know, that's just the that's it I mean um, you know everybody's results different and that's why I don't really care about shoot, showing shooting scenes anymore because my results are not going to be yours and your results are not going to be mine it's all dependent on the shooter and your setup and all that stuff so um, but anyways all I could say is the 75 yard group the reason why those are left and right is because of me trying to line up perfectly at 75 yards and like I said a gun an air gun is not the same as a firearm so shooting the same distance as a firearm is not the same exact way because a pellet is going to be unstable at a certain distance versus a bullet so anyways guys um, i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, again if you haven't seen part one check it out uh, and another thing i want to hit on real quick before i end the video is i can't stress enough no matter what pellet it is to see the true the true uh way it's going to shoot shoot more of that same pellet don't switch pellets shoot uh like I, i've mentioned before i usually do about 20 uh rounds two magazines full of one pellet just to see how it's going to act if it's going to tighten up or if it's going to stay the same and if, if the groups stay the same you know they're not that great switch pellets but that doesn't mean you know i i had to actually shoot these pellets about 30 times today to get them to shoot that good because the barrel is getting tuned to those pellets um, you know every little crevice and rifling and land and groove and all that every time I shoot the gun now the pellets are the exact same spot I point my crosshairs at um, within the variance of me being the shooter which I'd say at 75 yards that's pretty good so anyways guys I hope these tips help everybody out there um, you know I'm gonna be attempting to take these out to 100 yards which I've seen somebody take them out to 125 but that was indoors uh, but other than that I appreciate you guys watching as always and uh, stay tuned in for more videos we'll see you next time